Well, welcome, Audrey. Really, thank you so much for uh, you and the museum allowing us to, to even look at this. How did the museum get hold of it? And what's the problems behind this being Michael Collins' cap? It's uh, quite a convoluted story, but it, actually it starts in terms of our registration, which a copy of which is here, on the 27th of January 1923, when there were orders sent by telephone, not by file, from Pres President uh, W.T. Cosgrave's office through his private secretary, Bannum, that this was to be deposited, along with the great coat that uh, Michael Collins was wearing at Bell Law in, in August of 1922, um, in the museum. Mm -hmm. So, it, but there was also um, instructions over the phone and it was instructed not to be put on public view. So it's, um, it's a very special object because we do have it alongside the great coat. So in terms of tangible traces of the man himself on the last day he was alive, you, you couldn't get, I suppose, more um, visible than this. Mm. Amazing to see it. Um, how certain are we that it is what we think it is? We're very certain actually because even though there was uh, conflicting reports that Dalton um, uh, had his cap somehow mixed up as Michael Collins' cap, um, on the 30th of July 1973, Jim Carney, who was one of the three men involved in um, the ambush on the Republican side on the 22nd of August 1922, came to the assistant keeper of the Art and Industrial Division here in the National Museum of Ireland, who was Oliver Snoddy. And Oliver Snoddy, quite rightly, asked quite a lot of questions um, of Mr. Kearney, and uh, what he remembered, um, particularly considering uh, they were supposedly um, involved in the burying of this cap the following day um, in a field uh, in Jim Murray's uh, property. Um, and ultimately he remembers that um, this was definitely the cap in question because of the presence of the um, bullet hole, ultimately, um, which would have been worn at the back of the right ear. And we took it down in 2004 and examined it thoroughly. And it was felt that it was in danger of actual um, major um, damage. Um, it already has, I think, quite a bit of light damage. Um, because it has been exhibited from 91 to 2004, mm. even 2005, it may have been taken down the year after. But certainly um, it was felt because it was so fragile and because the mounting involved traditionally when it comes to any kind of headwear, um, particularly a cap by way of textile conservation, means that it would usually have to be the other way around. Um, it was kind of, it would lead to more fragility mm. in terms mm. of um, it, it, it's, it's just incredibly fragile and it, it would be better and safer in terms of preservation, which is what we're all about, to have it um, on view by appointment only, mm -hmm. um, which of course we facilitate on an ongoing basis. So. Mm -hmm.